Welcome to Instrumental Analysis. I'm Vicki Colvin. We're in the middle of a series of mini lectures about liquid chromatography. And in this section, what I really want you to take away is some more insights into the role of the mobile phase in tuning the interactions between the analyte and the column. I'm going to introduce the concept of a reversed phase and a normal phase separation and go over also the idea of gradient elution in liquid chromatography. So the bottom line is the mobile phase gets in the way in liquid chromatography. So when you do an LC experiment, the analyte's ability to interact with the stationary phase is completely mediated by the mobile phase. And so you have to really think about the chemistry of the mobile phase just as it relates to the stationary phase. And we learned in the last lecture about strong and weak eluents. Strong being highly interacting, weak being not so interacting. And that the nature of that interaction would control whether the analyte sees or doesn't see that stationary phase. So the reason is that the mobile phase competes with the analyte for column interactions. And as the mobile phase becomes more like the column or more like the stationary phase, I use those two terms, column and stationary phase, interchangeably, then you're going to have a harder time for that analyte to compete and actually see the column. So it's just going to zoom right on by. Whereas if the mobile phase is weak, has no interaction with the column, then the analytes will really spend some time and interact and actually come out much more slowly. So let's just go over strong and weak again and a little bit about the reasoning. So over here on the left is a case where the mobile phase is a lot like the column. So if you have a nonpolar column, that means it might be acetonitrile, something really kind of nonpolar. So that caffeine molecule that I've drawn really has a bunch of this mobile phase in the way, and it's not going to really see the stationary phase or partition like it would if it was a different solvent. And so there's less analyte interactions with the column, short elution times. This is an example of a strong eluent or a strong mobile phase. It's highly interactive with the column and it blocks the analytes from seeing the column. Conversely, you can have a weak one, a weak mobile phase, which sort of doesn't really interact very much with the column and it really allows the analyte stationary phase interactions to play a big role. That means you're going to have long elution times. Things are going to spend a lot of time partitioning and interacting with the column. And that means that the solvent or the mobile phase is a weak eluent. So we have the strong case and the weak case. And just to go back to my cartoon diagrams, we got the really strong mobile phase over here on the left. He's like the cop saying, no way, no how, you're not interacting with my stationary phase. Or you have the weak solvent. Eh, yeah, yeah, I'll share it with you, I don't really care. And those are really your two different situations. So what you want to do in these problems is quickly kind of deduce, do I have a strong eluent or a weak eluent? And that may take some reasoning. Once you've decided that, you'll be able to figure out, okay, if it's strong, it's going to have really rapid, really rapid separations, but maybe overlapping peaks. And if it's weak, I may have a really long separation. Peaks may spread out, but I may have to wait a long time. So let's go back to this example that we looked at in the last lecture, just because I think it's important that you know how to do this reasoning. So again, we have a nonpolar stationary phase, and our primary solvent, B, is acetonitro. If it's not specified, the other solvent is almost water. So out here at 90% B, I only have 10% water, so that's not very po polar. It's mainly nonpolar, which means it's going to be a lot like our stationary phase. And that means that our strong eluent is going to be over here on the left, so things are zooming right out. Peaks are piling on top of each other, very characteristic of too strong of an eluent. And over here on the right at 60% B, it's starting to look pretty good. We still can't really resolve 1, 2, and 3, but we at least see all eight of our peaks in kind of a reasonable time. Now, if you really wanted to resolve 1, 2, and 3, of course, you would go to an even weaker eluent that let 1, 2, and 3 really interact with the column, but of course, you don't even want to wait how long you're going to have to wait to see molecule 8. And so that's really the take home with these systems. Now in that case, it's something we call a reverse phase separation. And in the, in the world of chromatography, the terms normal and reverse phase are just, I think, historical. But a normal phase separation, it's always a polar column. Okay, It's always a polar column. And something that's a little confusing to students is you think with a polar column, You'd run or run solvents that are water, ethanol, isopropanol. You don't want to do that. <laughs> you don't want to match your mobile phase polarity to the column too closely. Because what that's going to do is two things. First of all, it's going to dissolve the column. Column is going to dissolve in the mobile phase. But more critically, there, it's going to be too strong. It won't interact. 
So you can never match your mobile face polarity right up against the polarity of your column. You tend to work with polarities that are kind of in the middle. But as you get to more polar solvents, say you have acetonitrile mixed with methanol, as you add more methanol, you are going to get faster separations because you're going to have higher eluent strength. If you're running hexanes, well, that's not going to interact at all with a normal phase column or a not or a polar column. And so you're going to end up seeing that nonpolar mobile phase lead to really long retention times. What about a reversed phase? A reversed phase column is nonpolar. It's really waxy. So you will never run solvents like pure hexanes or a really, really nonpolar solvent. You're going to be working with acetonitrile, maybe you know, DMF, methanol, isopropanol. And as you go more nonpolar, you're going to get separations that are basically faster and you're going to have stronger eluents. So it's as you match to the column's polarity, you're going to get stronger. But realize you're never going to run a really nonpolar solvent with a nonpolar column, and you're never going to run a really polar solvent with a polar column. So in normal phase chromatography, then, you know you have a polar column, which means you're going to be running relatively a range of nonpolar solvents. Your most polar might be acetonitrile. And if you're doing reverse phase separations, you're going to tend to work with polar. You might run water, actually, as a mobile phase. And you're going to be making and tuning the polarity kind of to get it more nonpolar. Almost always, if you can, you will run a reversed phase separation with a nonpolar column. And there's some really good practical reasons for this. The biggest one being, if you're running a reversed phase column, you're much, much, much less sensitive to the presence of water. And one of the real hassles in a chromatography system is having to dry all your solvents. So the problem with normal phase really kind of comes down to you've really got to remove all the water from your mobile phase, which can be problematic. Um, you also have more stable columns that are less reactive. And so typically, reverse phase separations are the separation of choice or the go-to separation. Under some conditions, you'll be forced to do normal phase, but you'll always kind of want to avoid it if you can. So here's a table just to help you practice some of what we've been talking about. Elution strength is an interesting parameter. Uh, your book, which I hope will be available to you this week, will actually tell you a little bit more about that. But it's a measure of strength. So if you have an elution strength of one, things are identical. But as you get up in elution strength, it means things are similar. So what kind of column must this be? So pentane is a super, super weak eluent, and methanol is a strong eluent. So is it a normal phase column or a reversed phase column? Well, this is a normal phase column. Remember, normal phase equal polar. And since methanol is a strong eluent, that's a pretty polar column. So why do some things elute, would, would things elute faster or slower with methanol? Well, methanol is the strong eluent. It's going to say, no, you can't interact with the stationary phase, and things are going to go zooming on by. So things are going to elute faster with a strong eluent like methanol. And the final question you don't know the answer to yet, but I'll throw it out there for those who are reading ahead or have some background in this area. The reason the UV cutoff matters is that the dominant way we detect things in chromatography is through UV absorbance. And once you're past the cutoff, or if your solvent is absorbing all the light, it's black, and you won't be able to see what's in there. So you typically want UV cutoffs that are as small as possible, or wavelengths that are as, to the blue, as blue as you possibly can get. So going back to the solvent effects, you've seen this graph a lot now, so I won't go over it again. But I do want to go over the example where we ran 30% acetonitrile and 70% water. The good news about that separation is we are able to pull apart peaks 1, 2, and 3. The bad news about that separation is to even get to peak 5, we had to wait 46 minutes. So the question is, what can you do if you're only running a solvent with single composition? You're always going to have this problem that if you have a lot of analytes, some of which are more polar than others, you may have to wait a really long time for them all to come off the column. So what are you going to do about that? Well, you're going to do something called gradient elution. Typically, you're going to start the separation with a weaker eluent. I'm going to say that again. You're going to start your separation with a weaker eluent. And the reason is that you want to start and give everything a lot of interaction with the column. And so you're going to start to pull things off the column, peaks 1, 2, and 3, but they're not going to be peaks that, or, or analytes that interacted much. 
Over time, though, you're going to start to increase the strength of your eluent. Remember, this is a nonpolar stationary phase. So if we go up to 45% acetonitrile, which is more nonpolar, we're going to start to actually pull things off quicker because we're going to start to block the column. And then at the end of the separation, if you ramp it up to 80% acetonitrile, all those peaks, like peak number eight that might have come out at three hours, all of a sudden are zooming out because you're over the span of the separation, increasing the strength of the eluent. So in a gradient solution, you always start with a weak solvent, and by mixing in another solvent, you make it stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, so as to pull out your late eluting peaks and make them come earlier. It's very analogous in gas chromatography, if you remember, we had a temperature ramp on the system. So we finished the chromatography run at a higher temperature than when we began. And we did that so as to get those really highly interacting enolates out of the column and into the detector. And you're doing the same thing here. By going to a stronger solvent, you're blocking those interactions and you're forcing your enolate out. And so if you look at that 80% acetonitrile peak, what's going on there is you're pulling out analyte 8 because you've got such a strong eluent, it can't really interact with the column. So I've pretty much gone over the basics of the chemistry of chromatography columns in the LC system. So in the last lecture of this week, we'll be talking about the detectors that we use for LC systems. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.